Men in the Arena Army, we salute you. Hey, guys, thanks for listening to another episode of the Men in the Arena podcast. I'm Jim Ramos, the host of Spotify's number one podcast for Christian men. This is Equipping Men in 10, and our goal is to help you to thrive, not just survive in that stress bubble of life as you raise your kids, love your wife, you're engaged in your church, your community. Man, we want to see you champion the cause of those people and causes you love the most, and we're excited to have you be a part of this. So thank you guys so much for making this podcast what it is. As you know, guys, we're continuing in our series, The Effective Prayer of a Righteous Man, and this is installment number four, and I love the title of this. This is called Jesus Pro Tips About Prayer. You know, Jesus had some things to say and model about prayer. And I think those really help us in our journey. You know, we've talked about the prerequisites in prayer. We've talked about how do you discern God's voice? We talked about how do you know for sure that God, what God speaks is actually from God. Uh, last week, we talked about how to pray, Psalm 4610, which, man, that, I am loving praying that prayer. That is so wonderful for me. Today, we're going to do a precursor to next week's episode on how to pray the Lord's Prayer. But before we teach you how to play, pray the Lord's Prayer, I want to go through these pro tips of Jesus that he lays out even before he lays out the, uh, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. So here we go. This is the pro tips of Jesus. And again, our series is based on James 5.16. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So pro tip number one, are you ready? Pray in a secret place. In Matthew 6, 6, Jesus said, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So guys, what I believe this is saying here, what I believe that Jesus even modeled is go to a place of solitude. It can be in the mountains. It can be in your office. It can be a prayer walk in the early, early mornings. It can be your study late at night. Find a place, you know, a lot of people call this your prayer closet. I don't care. Some, you know, there's a movie called The War Room, which is based on this verse. I don't care where you go, and I don't think it matters to God, but find a place that you can go and get alone, a secret place that you can focus on you and your relationship with God and the things he wants to say to you. So that is pro tip number one from Jesus. Pro tip number two is to set a specific time. It doesn't have to be the same time every day, but you should block a time in your calendar for prayer. Now, I had a pastor push back on me one time. He said, well, the Bible says to pray unceasingly. And I said, yeah, it does. It says that once. Once. And all throughout Scripture, we see Jesus not only possibly praying unceasingly, but having a blocked time of prayer. We are men. We are compartmentalized. We need to block time in our schedule to get before the throne of God. So don't, don't give me this, um, oh, pray unceasing. Hey, you know what? That's the goal. Good for you. Giving 100% of my income is the goal, too, but I've got to start somewhere. We start with a block of time. Now watch this. Matthew 14, 23. And after Jesus had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. So he went somewhere. Matthew 26, 36, a whole different set setting. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. Mark chapter 6, verse 46. After leaving them, he went to the mountainside to pray. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. One of those days, Jesus went out to the mountainside to pray. He spent the night praying to God. So these are, these are all moments where Jesus blocked time out of his calendar to pray. And so I believe that this is what Jesus is telling us. We need to go to a secret place and set time during, the, during our day to pray. For me, that block of time is 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the morning. I get up at 5, 5.30. I don't have an alarm. I get up whenever I wake up. 5.30, let's say, on average. I read my Bible till like 7.30, and then I work out, and then I go pray. And that's my routine Monday through Friday. But I want you to note two things here about prayer. There are two things that Jesus did in these settings I think will really help you. Number one, he was always alone when he prayed, like in that setting, and he prayed almost always in the dark. And I believe that he prayed alone and he prayed in the dark to remove all sensory uh, distractions from him so that he could truly hear from God. And I could not stress this more. Praying while you're driving, 
praying in a crowd, I mean, those are fine. They'll get it done. But if you really want to have effective prayer, you really need to be alone. You need to remove all stimuli from around you, and you need to seek God wholeheartedly with full devotion, full focus, and full engagement. Pro tip number three, pray without words or pray with words, but pray mostly without words. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, again, these are all passages leading up to the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they'll be heard by their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. And then Psalm 37, 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And 1 Samuel 1, 13, Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard because God, this is important, God knows your heart. You don't have to pray. In fact, some people think that praying out loud may be a way that Satan can even sneak in and hear something. I, I, I'm not going to get weird with you there, but I'm just saying, if you pray to God in your heart, he will hear you. You do not have to open your mouth to have God hear you. Uh, Psalm 27, 14, Psalm 41, Psalm 135, Isaiah 30, 18. Over and over again, we see situations where God hears our heart. And so we do not have to be stressed out about using all these words. Just turn to God. Just turn to Him. Give Him your full engagement and let Him do what He does best. Let Him initiate and engage you in conversation. Pro tip number four, pray with the right heart towards others. So now in Matthew chapter six, Jesus says, go to a place and pray. He says, set it, basically he models us for us to set a time to pray. Pro tip three, pray without words or with words, but mostly without words. And then part four, this is all in Matthew chapter six. We see this. Pro tip number four in Matthew chapter six, verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you also. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is important. In 1 Peter 3, 7, Peter affirms this for husbands. He says, husbands, in the same way, be considered as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you in the gracious gift of God so that nothing will hinder your prayers. And you know, guys, I got to tell you, there was a point in my life I'm not proud of where I had a certain person I was in bondage to, and every time I saw their car drive by, I would literally cuss and say, that little, and I would say something. And I was just in bondage to this person. And it really hurt my prayer life until I began to break free of that and been, began praying for that individual and allowing God to knock that stuff off of me, that chip off my shoulder so I could have the freedom. And the, the just a situation happened about two weeks ago. A guy came up to me and said, hey, do you know so-and-so? I said, yeah, I do know so-and-so. Oh, well, he said he would never join any ministry you're part of. And I was like, really? That's really weird. We had a meeting years ago, and I confronted him on his bitterness, and he became bitter because of it. And apparently he's still bitter. And sadly, that's on him. He, he needs to approach me if he's bitter and say, hey, man, I'm bitter towards you because it's hindering this guy's prayers. And I don't know and didn't know about it, and quite frankly, I don't care. And so um, we, when we are harboring something against somebody else, we can't expect God to hear our prayers. When unforgiveness and bitterness capture us, that, per that person literally owns us. They own us. So what does Jesus teach us about prayer? Well, he teaches us to go to a secret place and pray, pro tip one. Pro tip two, he teaches us to pray during a set time. Pro tip three, he teaches us to pray without words or words if you have to. Pro tip number four, he teaches us to pray with a right heart towards others, not being in bondage to anybody else through unforgiveness. So I hope this helps you guys. Make sure you head on over at, when you when you can to our website at manarena.org. Grab your free copy of my book, Tell Them What Great Fathers Tell Their Sons and Daughters. While you're there, guys, it's time to move from an engaged follower to an active participant. Click that Join Our Program button now. Get involved in one of our many national teams. These are led by volunteers just like you. Uh, man, you're going to love these guys. They are so deeply committed to Jesus. These are men's men. You're going to love these guys. Till next time, feel the wet sand on the arena floor. Hear the deafening roar of the crowd. Taste the sweetness of victory. Smell the stench of battle. Get in the game. Get dirty. Grind it out. And be in the game.
You've been listening to the Men in the Arena podcast. If you hunger to be your best version, then join thousands of men from around the world in our Men in the Arena forum on Facebook. This is the best place to have open discussions around the topic of biblical manhood. Make sure to explore our website at meninthearena.org, sign up for the weekly equipping blast, and take advantage of our many free resources designed to help you become your best version of a man. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Men in the Arena podcast. Remember, when a man gets it, Everyone wins.